Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory. So we're starting my L3. As you can see, I've got a bunch of the parts around me, but uh, your L3 process actually has to start with you first finding two uh, prefects, especially within Tripoli, which is the organization I'm working with. Um, I have to find two taps basically to work with me that um, can sign off that I'm doing the process correct as I build an L a level three rocket. None of the other certification levels require you working directly with currently experienced members, but the level three cert does. So I've got two taps at my local club, um, which is the Cloudbusters group, uh, now down near Argonia, Kansas. So I've got two taps identified. I have sent them my entire design set. So I sent them CAD of my rocket that I made up, um, as well as a wiring diagram and a complete and total parts list that included the motor, parachute, shock cord, everything I plan to use on the entire rocket down to even some of the nuts and bolts that I'm going to be putting in like my threaded rod and the nuts and like the eye bolts so that they could get a look at truly every single part I was going to be using. I sent them that information in December, early January. We went back and forth a couple times with some recommendations. I sent back my modifications and changes and finally I got approval to continue with the project in um, the middle of January. So I was told, okay, your project layout meets our requirements and what we want to see. So you're good to go ahead and start building. And then um, my requirement is to send them updates as I go along and build. So some of these video progress is going to be me actually putting together the updates for uh, my taps to be able to review. Um, I'm also going to be sending them pictures via email uh, quite regularly so that they can ensure they know what's going on at all times. So I've got all these parts I've started to print out already and I've sent them pictures of all the parts. I'd already previously discussed with them um, how I was going to build this in detail. They've seen my Festus rocket fly, which is the prototype I built of this to prove that I could even do what I was wanting to do for my L3. And they were comfortable after seeing that fly to say that yes, this was a reasonable design. Um, and then once they saw my parts list and my procedures, they were more comfortable with it. So I've got three of what I call these adapter pieces that basically allow me to adapt between a fiberglass piece and a 3D printed body. Since I'm using a standard fiberglass coupler and nose cone, I've got to be able to adapt in to these parts as such. That's a little tight. There we go. So everything matches up really, really nicely. But I've got these adapter pieces, um, and I've got a ton of just body tube sections all over the place, including I've even got my motor retention. I don't have the thrust plate I want to use yet, but I've got the motor retention put together. So these body tube sections are pretty much all identical. Uh, the only thing I'm really missing right now is my fin can. Uh, my buddy that is going to be printing the fin can off for me, his printer has been down uh, since he moved uh, late last year and he's missing a couple parts that he needs to get it functional again. So unfortunately with the standard like shipping delays and like, um, like just stock parts are not available as readily as they used to be, there's been some delays in getting uh, him to be able to print the parts I need for my fin can, which is actually going to be one single part. It will be like two foot tall, so it'll be three of these together. So three, yes, yeah, three of these, and then the fins will be like massive off the side here. It's got like an 18 inch diameter, and I just couldn't print that on my personal stuff. Um, I do actually have all the parts now to be able to go ahead and assemble my upper body tube. So my upper body tube will consist of two of these adapters to go between the nose cone and my eBay and will be three sections right here, consisting of about 24 inches in length. And we'll actually have six carbon fiber rods that run inside the six holes on the bottom here, and those six holes match all the way through the parts. So those carbon fiber rods will run from about here to about down here. I hope my bottom finger's on screen. Um, it ends up being about 13, 14 inches of carbon rod that I'll have running in this section. Then I'll use CA glue to glue the sections together so they can't slide up and down on the rod. And then I'll take, turn this sideways, run a rod through it and do a fiberglass layup and be able to rotate it around 
to glass the whole thing. Uh, I'm thinking between two to four layers. On this, Festus got two layers, so I think Praetor being a little bit bigger needs three to four. Um, just kind of still running the math on what I think the best is. Um, I could always do two, and if two feels too uh, light, I can just rough sand it again and put two more layers on or put one more layer on all the way around. Adding more is not that hard. It's harder to take it off. Um, I'm trying to keep the weight pretty much right at the like minimum of what can handle. But the uh, these prints are actually all PETG and they're printed at 10% infill. So they're as light as they can possibly be while providing the maximum amount of structure that I need. Um, so aside from this, the other thing I'm going to be working on will be my electronics bay. So I prototyped my electronics bay for Festus and um, this has been like the final design I wanted to move forward with onto Preter. And Festus uh, will basically get a fly again with this version of it rather than the other one. The other one had a failure in the final flight where a chunk cracked and I was just not happy with that happening. But I'll have this sled and I'm going to have two 3D printed bulkheads uh, with all thread that runs all the way down. There will be a metal strap that I'm going to run across here between these two bolts that will then allow my eye bolt out the center to transfer load to the all thread all the way through the rocket body down to the other side where I'll have another identical printed cap, um, steel strap, and eye bolt. And obviously these threaded rods are just a little too short for the design. So I'll have to cut new threaded rods before I can fly Festus again. But this is just my updated design piece for what I want to do with Festus uh, moving forward. So it's a little bit bigger and it's also just everything I plan to use on Preter. And obviously if you kind of like look at this and go, well that's Festus's eBay and here's Preter's eBay, five inches versus three inches. All of this fits happily in three inches with like plenty of space to spare. So like it's gonna fit very easily inside my five inch eBay. So I'm not concerned about like spacing and fit since I got everything to fit happily in here. Uh, I may even have room to upgrade some electronics to some different stuff. Um, but I got approval for using the egg timer and the uh, RRC3, so that's what I need to use for my cert flight. I'm really considering uh, trying to fly a Quasar at some point on Festus because I think the Quasar will be really cool with the telemetry downlink um, and all of that. But the basics of it are that I will get started on a lot of the pieces of this build as I go along. You'll end up seeing videos pop up here and there that'll be like Preter part two, Preter part three, like, and whatever I'm doing in that build, whether it's the eBay, the upper body tube, the lower body tube, um, as I'm building through it, ejection testing, all of those type of things, but they won't be like a regular piece of content. It's gonna be when I get it done, when I feel like it's done properly, um, I want to make sure I have all my ducks in a row before I'm testing and showing you what I've done. Um, this is quite a temperamental way to build a rocket. As you saw my Festus build um, in my video in January, things have the ability to go wrong, but they also have the ability to go right if you take your time and do the math. That's one of my favorite statements is do the math. Make sure you know what you're doing. So we're always trying to make sure we get everything correct all the way through. Um, I will also have a tracker that I'm going to put in the nose cone. I haven't quite figured out how I want to design the nose cone eBay because the one I used for uh, Festus was a little temperamental, but since I've got so much more room in Preter's nose cone, I'm not as concerned. But that's all for this video. If you have any questions about my level three process with Tripoli, uh, please leave a comment down below and I will try to answer it as best I can. I may direct you to their webpage where they've got more answers or to different resources I've used for getting this uh, project going, such as the Rock Tree Forum or other posts on uh, Facebook. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Something you may or may not already know about is that Inverpsuits Lab has a web store where we sell 3D printed rocket kits and components. From simple park flyer to our pasture flyer line, we have rocket kits for all ages and experience levels. You'll also find parts like camera shrouds, screw switch covers, and charge wells. Printed from durable PETG, these products can withstand temps up to 185 degrees Fahrenheit and will not melt even on the hottest days of flying. Our goal is to provide you the highest quality of parts at reasonable prices, so if you're interested in checking us out, our link is in the description below.